Tan Fam, we're going from one blockbuster movie with Jonathan Majors to another. My next guest is reprising her role as the loving and supportive foster mom, Rosa Vasquez, in the much anticipated DC superhero sequel, Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Take a look. I promise after this, if I don't get eaten by a dragon, I'm not going to force you to keep me, okay? What? I know I, I age out soon. Piggy, my wonderful, kind, brave son, you will never age out of your home. Never. Now do me a favor. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Go kick their ass. Okay? I love you, Mom. Me too. Shazam! So, listen, Tanfam, what makes that scene even more powerful? While she was playing a mom on the big screen, Marta Milan's reveal for the first time just last week in People Magazine that she'd been struggling to start a family with her husband, Julian, and is now, right now, undergoing IVF. But she says her role as Mama Rosa actually gave her hope, and now she wants to do the same for other families. Tam Fam, please welcome the amazing Marta Milan to our show! I'm going to grab my handkerchief. Yeah, me too, me too. Let's start with the handkerchief. Oh, my okay. gosh. Um, <laughs> this quote from you in the article, you said, preparing for this role of Mama Rosa, you said, I get to play this mother in this movie who's a foster mom. We don't know the reason she's a foster mom. It's not explained. But it made me think maybe God is sending me this to say, Marta, it's going to be okay. You will be a mom. Mm. Yeah, I... Um... I've always known I was gonna be a mom. I, I've known that in my heart as, from a very young age. And when I got to play this role to all these wonderful little children from all walks of life, uh, of life that come and find a, a, a found home under my, under my heart, you know, under Mama Rosa's heart. And to get to play that, I thought, wow, there's, I think God is sending me a sign that somehow that's gonna work out uh, for me. Like I, I, I should really work on trying to be a mom myself, you know, and it's been a longer process than I um, hoped, yeah. you know, I think until women, um, we try to go for the motherhood thing. It's not until we, we start that we don't know how it's going to Yeah, you don't know what's us. happening with your body. And, you know, I became pregnant at age 48. And you talk about signs and, and God revealing things. Mm -hmm. I was actually in Harlem and I saw a sign on my last round of IVF and it said, you know, adoption. And I wrote, I pulled over, I wrote down the phone number and I made it home. And that day I received a call that it worked, that I was oh. finally pregnant. But I was prepared for whatever oh, wow. parent journey, whether that meant bringing a child into my home mm -hmm. um, or bringing a child in the world through my body. I just yeah. decided, but I was looking for the signs. So I know that feeling mm -hmm. and I think that's why mm -hmm. it hit me. So why reveal it now? Because I, you know, that's a tough one. I know you talk a lot about getting caught up in the notion of the right time, you know, believing that the right time mm -hmm. you would have a child, but then when it was time. I think as, as career women, you know, and, and when people say, you know, women can have it all, that's, that's not true. We, we can have it all, just not at the same time. Yeah. And in, as a professional, you have to choose. Mm -hmm. And in the entertainment business, you have to choose, you know? And, and you faced that in your life, feeling like you had to choose? I, I had to. I, I, you know, I moved from Spain at a, at a young age, and I really had to pursue my dream and give it everything that I had. And, and I had to focus on that, you know? And when the time comes, like, wow, I really, I, I don't want to just be a career person. I, I want to have a family. Yeah. And when you choose that path, you don't know how it's gonna be. And you know, we, we become mothers in this day and age later mm -hmm. in life. So fertility becomes an issue, mm -hmm. you know? And 
finding out my own process through it and talking to old girlfriends of mine from Spain um, that would reveal to me when I would share openly, oh, I'm gonna do a round of IVF and let's see how it goes, you know? And then you would hear, oh, my two kids are IVF kids. Yeah. Or, but it's something that, it's not normalized. It's not openly talked about. It, uh, uh, there's some sort of, I don't know if it's, a shame thing no, or, or like, layers. Or, or layers like our bodies, you know, like I'm not good enough of a woman yeah. if I have to do the IVF thing or it's my fault if I have a miscarriage or like I said, I miscarried. You, you didn't miscarry anything. You had a pregnancy loss. Like we, our bodies didn't miss by mistake do anything. It's the opposite of that. Our bodies are wise enough to, for some reason, not get, bring us that, ba that baby that we want in that particular time. And and I've learned so much in that process that the reason why I wanted to come forward and share it publicly and, and try to help other women that are, are feeling lonely in this very lonely process yeah. is the fact that I've gone through it myself and I've realized, wow, there's so much secrecy around this. Let's, let's bring it up to the table. Let's, let's share it with our fellow and women. And your husband is also talking openly. Julian, how has he been through this? He's process? been- By the way, uh, beautiful couple, uh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> he's been um oh god that's really gonna make me cry he's been the most um the strongest rock of support that i could dream of and i don't i don't i would not have been able to do this without him and he's with me every step of the way and no one talks about also all the hormonal crazy yeah. stuff that we have to put in our bodies yeah. and all these medications and make you feel really like dr jekyll and mr hyde <laughs> And I'm already intense as I am myself, <laughs> being from Spain. There's a lot of Latin blood going on over here. And if you add a lot of synthetic hormones Wait, to that. I, I've been there, yes. I mean, God bless his <laughs> God bless him. <laughs> so many charming things are happening in your life. When you were on set, you got word that you would be a citizen, a US citizen. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, so proud of that. I'm, I'm really. And how surreal is that? I mean, you're in the DC universe. Doesn't get bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And then you learn. <laughs> wait a minute, what? I'm also gonna be an American. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It was. Um, I had a, a green card for for many years, but this is the country that has given me all the opportunities that I could ever dream of. Um, has opened all the doors for me, and I I do believe I'm an eternal optimist, and I do believe to this day that the American dream still exists. I'm an example of it. I came to this country when I was 19 and a half and didn't know anybody here. I just had a big dream and I thought of Broadway, I thought of Hollywood and um, it happened. So it can happen. You just have to work really hard. Well, you've done okay. that and we are rooting for you, not only in this huge blockbuster, but in your family. Please keep us posted and know you have a friend here to take Thank the calls so when the hormones are up yeah. and down. Maybe when they're a little bit more up so I don't sound like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. I'll rescue it? Julian because my <laughs> poor husband, he would walk and see me in the room, he'd turn around. He's like, oh, <laughs> oh that person's oh, here today. Oh, oh. Let me yeah. leave. So we're I here. should tell him. I should <laughs> you tell should him make that. sure. Well, we're rooting for you and we love you Thank so you much. Congratulations on Thank everything. You. Thank you. Shazam, Fury of the Gods will be out March 17th at a theater near you.